Hi, today I wanted to talk a little bit about wealth uh, in the Seattle and Puget Sound area. Um, so in terms of global cities, um, you can see that Seattle is ranked number 21 here uh, behind Tokyo, New York, Los Angeles, London, Paris, a lot of others here, uh, Chicago, and so on, uh, San Francisco. Um, but uh, in terms of per capita income, um, of these top cities, uh, it looks like Seattle's ranked number three. So behind San Francisco and Washington, D.C. So uh, San Francisco being uh, the wealthiest per capita and then Washington, D.C. being number two and then Seattle being number three. So Seattle definitely has a, a lot of money being made there. Uh, you can see San Jose way down here, um, per capita income being quite high uh, down there in San Jose as well. But so it's something to think about um, when comparing everything. So if you're not familiar with the Seattle area, uh, this is basically Puget Sound, um, and you can see kind of the income distribution. Um, so interestingly, um, you know, really there's a lot of commuters heading into Seattle, perhaps from these areas, um, and you can see this is where most of the wealth is. Um, you know, the jobs uh, being primarily downtown in this area, um, and then also in. Uh, Bellevue, uh, you can see right over here. Um, so there's kind of some wealth, um, basically, uh, which is interesting that it's kind of separated off of Seattle a little bit. So down here, you'll see that uh, purple areas are pretty much top 1%. Um, high areas are green, um, bright green or dark green. Uh, and then uh, kind of average areas are in yellow and then low is in red or orange. Um, so you can kind of compare traffic around the country with a map like this. You can see New York City being very bad, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Chicago being very bad. And then actually you can see Toronto being pretty bad here. Places down in Miami and Florida looking bad, Houston looking pretty bad, Dallas looking pretty terrible as well. Um, but Seattle looking okay. So we can kind of zoom in. This is 8 a.m. on a Monday morning. So it's Tuesday, you can get a better uh, feel for what the traffic is. But um, you can see that on either side of the lanes, uh, you kind of have a coverage of what, uh, what the traffic looks like, right? So this all the way down into here, you can see is pretty bad. So on the right lane, this is uh, heading into the city here. And this is on the right lane here. So you can kind of see... Um, kind of a lot of peninsula based traffic, not a whole lot of traffic heading across here, but uh, quite some traffic heading into Bellevue um, as well as uh, Seattle as well. So you can kind of see that there's some people driving up from say Kent area, Auburn uh, into Bellevue um, and as well as, uh, but most of, the, most of the heavy traffic being centered around uh, Seattle. I'll just go through and look at some of these days with you so you can see on a Tuesday looking even worse um, and uh, Wednesday looking not quite as bad but worse in some areas um, and then you can see Thursday and Friday looking pretty good overall. Uh, one really sad thing is e afternoon traffic tends to be worse uh, than uh, morning traffic. Um, don't know why that is, but uh, if you look at the time frame here, you're looking at about 5 p.m. Uh, traffic just gets bad, really backed up uh, all the way. This is down in Olympia. Uh, you can see just backed up for something like 10, 20, 20 miles into Olympia. And then, uh, yeah, so this is all primarily, uh, Actually, this is heading back to Olympia, it looks like. So, uh, and then there's some traffic uh, heading out from Olympia. So, I'm not sure why that is so bad, but it's very bad there. On typical Friday, you can see Monday uh, looking a little bit better down in Olympia. But, uh, but in general, you can kind of see these days, Tuesday, Wednesday, looking pretty bad, Thursday. Friday and then Saturday looking a lot better but still there's some spots right in downtown that look pretty bad um, pretty much consistently um, for Seattle so that that little spot right in there is bad pretty much all time uh, Saturday Sunday Monday every day
So one of the reasons I did that is that the wealth pretty much stays on one side or the other. So it's pretty much on in this range. You either in Seattle or you're in Bellevue. Um, and actually Bellevue is looking a little bit more wealthier in general. Um, there's just a couple pockets here in Seattle that look uh, like they have some struggles. But also in Bellevue, there's some uh, pockets here outside the town. So one interesting thing is that rent and income is very similarly priced so you can see that if you look at this is the income map and this is the rent map and you can see that basically uh, they stay pretty similar um, the income map gives you a little bit more detail um, in some areas and the uh, rent map gives you a little more detail in some areas as well so kind of got to use both uh, if you're interested in looking at uh, housing value or incomes now, in terms of population in the downtown area, most of the people live right in here um, and also in the uh, what's considered the right downtown area, but just off of downtown up on this hill area. Um, and then there's kind of a lot of people on this area off of Lake Union. So um, as we look at uh, the uh, you know income map, it's, it's wise to kind of compare that to where the people are technically. Um, so you can kind of see as you compare these two maps, you know, most of the people being here along Lake Union uh, and also in this area. And yet uh, this area actually is quite poor, um, even though it's got pretty high density uh, population uh, people living in there. So this is like a housing growth map. Um, and here you can start to see um, basically where the growth in housing is. And that is basically around uh, Lake Union here. Um, and then up in here and then some areas in here. Now it can be quite complicated getting to and from work, uh, taking even 30 minutes just to cross one of these bridges um, and even doesn't depend on the daytime or anything. So, so I'd say even though he has some wealth out here in Sunset Hill um, and maybe in the interbay and heading out towards uh, Puget Sound, uh, it is quite hard uh, to drive some of these side roads uh, getting in, but. You know, it just depends on what you are comfortable with. So perhaps the wealthiest area uh, in downtown Seattle is this East Lake area around Union, Lake Union. Um, there's another little pocket here. Um, I personally like Lake Union a lot. Um, this area is pretty interesting up here, but this is more of the Queen Anne area up on the hill. Uh, it can be hard uh, to get up and down the hill uh, and get over to Seattle from there. So um, I would say this area is perhaps one of the more interesting areas to look at to start with. So if you look at that area here, we're basically talking about this area here, which corresponds to this area here roughly. So we're basically talking about right in here, um, there's actually some trees and some other things, um, which looks pretty nice. So kind of up on this hill, um, you can see Volunteer Park um, and some other Seattle Lake Union and kind of heading off towards these docks areas. So right in here, um, is doing pretty well in general. So you can kind of see um, this actually kind of gets close over to Capitol Hill, um, right? And you basically have a 10th Avenue running right through here, uh, kind of showing you where the main streets are. Um, so there isn't a whole lot of places to eat and uh, hang out uh, right in this area, but on the perimeter there is. So you can see a couple restaurants in here and then most of the restaurants start to pop in. Um, over here so you can see uh, I think this is 10th Avenue here but it's kind of near uh, the other side of 10th Avenue um, and then you can see 15th Avenue also having quite a number of shops uh, we'll just go in here and look at Thomas Street uh, and 10th Avenue as a potential place to look at uh, so one of the main reasons is because of the park here this has kind of got a main conservatory um, but if you zoom back out I can show you so certainly this is no Central Park, um, but it is a nice little park. It has a little lake, uh, some other areas, and you can see that uh, that probably makes the housing prices uh, worth a little bit more, um, and also the incomes just because people like to live near the park. Um, so there's a couple different areas to look at here. Uh, Linehurst and Windmere area kind of along uh, the lake here, um, and then also this lower part down here. Um, so this is more uh, a lot of people that would uh, work downtown and then this is more uh, associated with the university uh, wealth in this area because the university is basically right in here University of Washington you can see so 
but perhaps the biggest chunk of wealth in all of Seattle is still over here, um, Cl Clyder Hill, um, and you can kind of see uh, Hunts Point, uh, Arrows Point, and these different areas. So on a main map, we can kind of see what we're talking about here. We're kind of talking about this area here, this area here, and this area right in here. Um, and then also Mercer Island uh, to some extent down here. So we didn't see a whole lot of traffic uh, on these bridges actually. So that was interesting to see. So basically the wealth is not necessarily coming from one side or the other. It's kind of staying on one side or staying over here. So it's really difficult to appreciate how much the hills matter in Seattle. Um, it's a lot like San Francisco, uh, but I would say even more so, uh, more hilly uh, in some senses. Um, and uh, particularly for a lot of this residential housing uh, and things. Uh, so bringing us back a bit, here we can see Lake Union, um, and then we can see the various bridges heading over to the University of Washington campus area, um, and then kind of the uh, housing for that. So basically uh, many of the professors and other people living off in this area. Um, so here's the perspective of this one area that we're looking at. So we're kind of looking at this part down in here, um, which is basically corresponds to right in here and then up on this hill. Almost looks like a golf course up there. So you can see that um, basically right down near the water, it's not as wealthy, but kind of up on the hill here it is, uh, and then right in this pocket along here. So that corresponds to a slightly different area than you might think. Um, if you look at this map here, we can kind of see so there's basically this whole area up on the hill um that's doing pretty well um and then kind of this area of pocket in it here kind of heading down south um is uh down to Medora park so let's jump over and look at clyde hill uh and uh medina so certainly uh, a bit ways from the city uh, you can see downtown seattle over here um, actually, uh, you know, the bridge uh, right here, um, and you can kind of look at some of the coastline here. So quite a lot of coastline kind of inlets, outlets, and different places to live uh, right along the waterfront here. Might be slightly more desirable. Um, it's kind of a debate um, being closer to uh, Bellevue area, so maybe on this side, uh, you got the Medina uh, Beach Park and so on. So I'll just zoom in here to show you there's kind of some boat docking areas um, and nice uh, little spots uh, right uh, pretty close to downtown here, which is nice. So that area doesn't really show uh, the same amount of wealth, um, but uh, basically as you get back here in Medina and so on, but it's basically closer to Bellevue. Um, so kind of there is some pockets right in here that uh, aren't as considered as good in terms of income, but uh, it's kind of a debate as well. Now, on to Mercer Island, you can kind of see um, there is some pockets here um, and here, um, really close to the bridge, uh, kind of on the back side of Mercer Island, and then also kind of heading around here. So if you're not familiar with Mercer Island, it's this big island right here um, on the map. I'll rotate the map so you can kind of see, but basically here's Mercer Island. Kind of another perspective of Mercer Island, uh, but again, this kind of this backside uh, being a little bit uh, wealthy as well. So you can kind of see uh, basically there's these parts here again, and then kind of looping around here with a little gap right in there. Um, and then you can see right here, so we basically got this part in here, uh, heading around here, um, and then these two areas over there as well. You can see this area here. So again, it can be really hard to remember all these areas, um, but basically you can kind of focus uh, most of the wealth around Bellevue um, and then kind of the uh, outer side here of Seattle um, as being kind of the wealthy area. So kind of around the lake here. So you can kind of see um, that there is quite a suburban wealth as well um, out here near Redmond uh, and Samish. Um, and uh, some other areas. So the really funny thing about uh, wealth in Seattle is really Bellevue. Um, it's kind of, if you were to draw where the center is, it's kind of almost around Bellevue and this whole area in here. And certainly there's some pockets of rent uh, when you look at rent costs 
uh, near Bellevue that show that. So you can kind of see that there's purple right here, 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 which doesn't really show up on the income levels, but kind of shows up a little bit here. Um, so one surprising thing is that basically up in the San Juan Islands and many of these islands is not as wealthy. Um, it certainly does have some wealth on Brainbridge Island here, um, but in terms of the actual San Juans, it's actually got a lot of poverty up here, uh, relatively speaking. Um, so maybe some good uh, potential places to live um, and rent as well. Um, but you can see Everett up here, another big city, um, also kind of not uh, as wealthy, but uh, doing pretty good. And here's kind of a far out look of what's going on in Seattle. So when you look out far, you can start to see that these suburban areas uh, are becoming uh, pretty significant in terms of total land area um, and uh, wealth, um, but it certainly is quite far uh, from downtown Seattle um, and Bellevue as well. You might want to also check out some of the housing maps uh, and look at Redfin, for instance. They have uh, this kind of shows uh, median family income uh, all the way, uh, you know, last uh, change in the last five years. So you can kind of see where. Uh, things have been going a lot better and where things have kind of been getting worse, uh, which is interesting. So for instance, uh, this has been loss of $25,000, uh, whereas some of these areas right next to the wealthy areas uh, are doing a little bit better, but not as good as maybe near in some of the, along the coast here um, or up in here as well. And then you can see uh, families making $200,000 plus. Um, this map doesn't even show up on the other map, um, but you can see um, basically this uh, upper part of the coast being uh, even wealthier. Um, so this is maybe uh, some spillover from the University of Washington um, that didn't make it right into this area. So uh, population, so this is uh, pretty interesting to see. So it's nice to compare cross map um, and just see uh, which areas uh, are different. Um, and then you got families in poverty map. So surprisingly, some of these areas, it shows uh, there's quite a number of families in poverty in some of the same neighborhood, same neighborhoods uh, that were supposedly wealthy. Um, so that's kind of interesting to see. Uh, the crime map can also be helpful as uh, the Seattle Police uh, Department data maps. You can see a lot of the crime uh, kind of happening here near downtown. Um, and that's primarily right in this area, I would say, in this area as well. And then some pockets of crime kind of up in here, um, as well as near the University of Washington area. So again, Seattle is a pretty highly rated city. Um, it's certainly maybe in the top, uh, you know, top cities of the world. Um, this is a very serious uh, group of a lot of cities, almost 300 cities. Um, major cities and you can see that Seattle's in the top and certainly maybe in the top three um, for uh, GDP per capita. So I hope you enjoyed this study of Seattle uh, and uh, Bellevue turned out um, and just looking at different neighborhoods uh, around the Seattle area. There's certainly a lot of detail. Uh, I definitely go in and zoom in and take a look at both of the rent maps uh, and and once you zoom into the maps, you can kind of see, uh, pick out the neighborhoods and look at the exact details. Uh, and certainly uh, you want to take a look at multiple uh, different maps. There's just different data sources out there. Um, and some of the times the data doesn't quite agree. So it's worthwhile uh, looking at that. Um, there's also uh, a lot of these uh, population housing growth maps that would be interesting to look at, um, as well as uh, just to, general population density and comparing all of these together you can kind of get a good idea for what uh, the income is in the area. Hope you really enjoyed this study. Um, let me know if you got any questions. I'm going to post links to all these details here uh, in the video below and hopefully it's helpful. Thanks again. Uh, let me know if you got any questions. See you.